Hi, today we are talking on UTOTAL English Upper Intermediate Unit 1, Connect, and we are summarizing all the knowledge that we have got. So, in this unit, we talked about the present and the future. We use the present simple for habits and routines. I always have a large coffee for breakfast. We use the present simple for describing a state. She lives in a flat. We use the present simple for the things that are permanent or always true. Water covers about 70% of the world. We use the present continuous for things that are happening now at this precise moment. I'm waiting for the bus at the moment. For temporary situations that are happening around now, he's using his bike while his car is in the garage. For arrangements in the future, they're having a meal together next Friday. We use will plus infinitive for unplanned decisions made while speaking. I will give you a lift to the station. For predictions based on what you think or believe, I think Manchester United will win. They are always good. We use going to plus infinity for plans and intentions. I've decided I'm going to apply for university next year. For predictions based on what you know or can see or hear now. He's going to fail his exam. We do not usually use state verbs in the continuous form like life. Love, hate, think, live, now, want, need. And now complete the sentences with the correct form of the verb. Either present simple or the present continuous. For example, she always gets up late at the weekend. Please stop the video and do the exercise. Now choose the correct verb in italics. For example, Maria phoned while you were out. Or I will phone her back now. It's the intention and decision made while speaking. So that's why I will phone her back now. Stop the video and do the exercise. We also spoke about the past and we differentiated between the past simple, the past continuous, and the past perfect simple. Let's remember, we use the past simple to describe main past events, like I got up at 6 a.m. today, or I got up at 6 a.m. yesterday. And we use the past continuous to describe actions in progress when the main events happened. It was raining when I went to work. We use the past perfect simple to describe events and background information that happened before main events in the past. As soon as I saw Mick, I knew I had met him before. That means that he had met him before the moment he saw Mick. Okay, and now let's do the exercise, find five mistakes in five of the sentences and correct them. Stop the video and do the exercise. We spoke about obligation and ability. We use can or can't to talk about general ability in the present. We use could, couldn't, was, wasn't able to in the past. For example, I can speak Spanish and Portuguese fluently or she could read by the time she was four. We use couldn't and uh, wasn't able to, to talk about ability in the past on one specific occasion in negative sentences. He couldn't answer the interviewer's questions. We only use was able to 
not good to talk about past ability on a specific occasion in positive sentences. I was able to explain to him that what the problem was. He couldn't say I could explain to him. I was able to explain to him what the problem was. One specific occasion with positive sentence. We use have to and must when something is necessary. For example, you must take off your shoes before you come in. And we use don't have to when something is not necessary. I don't have to give my homework it in until next Friday. We use mustn't when something is prohibited. You mustn't open the machine before switching it off. We use should or shouldn't when something is or isn't the right thing to do. You should apologize to him immediately. They shouldn't close the shop so early. We use had to when something was necessary. We had to wait in a queue for hours before they let us in. And we use didn't have to when something was not necessary and there was a choice. I got a free ticket so I didn't have to pay anything. We use should have when something was the right thing to do, in your opinion, but you didn't do it. You should have asked me for a lift. And we use shouldn't have when something was not the right thing to do, in your opinion, but you did it. He shouldn't have worn such casual clothes to an interview. Now, choose the correct form of the verb in italics. Sometimes both are possible. For example, when he was younger, my brother could play the guitar really well or was able to play the guitar really well. Here, both variants are possible. So please stop the video and do the exercise. Up to now, please complete the sentences. Here you have some words and uh, here are eight sentences. And for the for example, we must take, you shouldn't eat so many cakes and biscuits. We have also taken some new key vocabulary. For example, let's uh, memorize it and say it out once again. Partner, wife, husband, stepsister, half-brother, sibling, colleague, soulmate, close friend, neighbor, acquaintance, come across as, bump into someone, make a very good impression on someone, see eye to eye with someone, judge a book by its cover, talk to someone face to face, click with someone. We've gained some vocabulary on ways of speaking, chat, Gossip, make small talk, greet someone, give someone a compliment, boast, mumble, speak up, talk down to someone, stumble over my words. Here are some new adjectives and nouns like intellect, intellectual, art, artistic, jealousy, jealous, loneliness, lonely, responsibility, responsible, Success, successful. Importance, important. Frustration, frustrated. Skill, skillful. We discussed how to say about keeping in touch. In touch or out of touch. Get in touch, keep in touch. Lose touch, stay in touch, touch base. And there are also some phrasal verbs that we have discussed about the relationships, like take after, grow up, show off, 
get on with someone, split up with someone, make up with someone, look up to someone, bring someone up, go out with someone, fall out with someone. And please find the wrong word in each sentence and correct it. For example, it's vital to make a good impression at a job interview. Here are eight sentences, so please stop the video and do the exercise. And up to now, thank you very much for your attention. See you next time. Bye.